Hey, it's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the most wonderful time of the year. Obviously, uh, it's in a song, but you think about it. That's what we've entered into, the most wonderful time of the year. But uh, why is that, you know? Uh, well, you know, if you asked maybe the kids, they go, the, the gifts, you know, the presents, uh, we went shopping. We were we were we went to the mall. We have, I haven't been to the mall. I got to be honest in a, in a while. And our mall has kind of stepped up its game a little bit with some new with some new uh, with some new stores in there. They got a ways to go and and kind of the the seasons that we've lived in here and a lot of change. But uh, I was impressed. But I'm watching people. I, do you ever watch anybody else watch people or is that just me? Like weird. Okay, a few of you watch people. Yeah, and and people are funny. You know. Um, uh, you know they uh, they they got a lot of personality, a lot of a lot of different things. Especially this time of the year, the most wonderful time of the year, right? We went to Walmart, and and one one lady was was she had her like shopping cart. She's going along, and I don't know if she was maybe buying for some kind of cause or something, but it looked like if it was for sale, she was buying it. That's just kind of what it looked like. And, and she's just grabbing it. She's like, and then, oh, you know, that's, that's worth two things. And then, you know, this one, a lot. And I mean, this, this thing was mounted. I, I mean, I was impressed. It was kind of a, a Jenga, kind of the, you know, she was getting it all in there and, and uh, going around. And my mind, I just, I wanted to ask her and go, what are you buying all this for? You know, um, and so the most wonderful time of the year and, Giving is part of this, but I think our understanding of giving gets a little warped because of marketing, because of culture, because of really the time. And I'm not, I'm not negating giving and receiving gifts at all, but I want to make sure that we have the proper perspective, even a spiritual perspective of what it is to give. And so I really, you know, the most wonderful time of the year, this this portion of it is, you know, what is giving a gift? What does that truly mean? What does it mean to give something? I know what it is to get rid of something. I know what it is to sell something. Uh, but giving a gift, like truly giving, what is that? What, what, what should that be? You know, what is giving when faith is attached? You know, when you, when you lay the, the aspect of a spiritual presence to our giving, to that mindset, to that, well, I think it may be very different than what maybe we've been led in, in our culture, and our society, and I believe that Christmas and holidays can be a little bit double-edged because people, uh, they forget, uh, they've, uh, maybe the understanding has been warped of what it is to truly give, so I want to get back to a biblical perspective of what it is to give, and I think this biblical perspective should be Something that how we give is a shadow of that. How we give is a representation of that. I want to give you a scripture that will probably be familiar to everyone. If not everyone, the vast majority here and online is John 3.16. John 3.16. Most familiar verse uh, in the Bible. And it says, For God so loved the world. Those two words, so loved. It gives us a premise of how God viewed this world we live in. How God viewed your life and my life and all the lives of his creation. For God so loved the world. That's the premise for how God does, for how God gives, for who God is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. How, how, how did, why did the purpose behind God giving us his son, truly the greatest gift, amen, was because he so loved this world. He so loved this creation, the same creation that we see in Genesis when God is speaking things into creation. He says, oh, this is good. This is good. God so loved what he created that he gave his son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In other words, the gift that God gives his creation that he so loves is the mechanism, is the only thing that brings hope and a future that brings 
light at the end of the tunnel. That's it. That's that gift. That's a powerful gift, church. Amen? Powerful gift. And so in giving gifts, in truly giving what it means to give, I want to give you some insight. I want to give you some thoughts, some ideas on, on giving a gift because maybe this season brings a little bit of stress. I just don't know what I'm going to buy the kids. I just don't. Can you put your list together? Can you do, you know, I'm not saying that's bad, but I'm just saying it's real easy to get our minds off what it is to truly give. What it is to truly let the meaning of this time of the year be a part of the most wonderful time of the year, which is the greatest gift God has ever given us. So if you're taking notes, write this down. A gift has an intention. Has an intention. There's something intentional about a gift. There's an intention about it. Uh, When a gift is truly given... There's something behind that. I think we should look at that. God loved and God gave. The intention behind his gift is love. The intention behind his gift wasn't to make a point. It wasn't to uh, cause, as we'll see, condemnation. It wasn't to uh, make you feel good or bad. His gift, the intention behind it was his love. Therefore, he gave, uh, you know, sin occurred. It removed the purpose of God's gift uh, it, it removed it from our lives. Uh, when, when sin entered the world, uh, we were messed up. When sin entered the world, uh, we needed hope because automatically we're hopeless. And God ultimately provided for the need, that intention, because he loved us. So many people, they, I think they get confused over God. They get, they get confused. They think maybe God's against them. God's there to catch them doing something wrong. God's there to correct them. God loves you. God just, just loves you. That's the whole premise of his gift to you, is his love for you. Sin occurred, and, and it messed it all up. God's gift includes his word. Praise God for the Bible. Praise God for his word. It's our roadmap. It's our foundation that we can build our life on, that we can live our life by. What a, what a powerful gift. God's gift includes uh, grace. You're thankful for, for grace in your life, the good that you don't deserve? I mean, that's that's a gift from God. You, you're thankful for mercy? Those things you deserve that, that are consequences, that are judgment. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we live in consequences, but thank God for his mercy because it curves it. It, it, it gives us something we don't deserve. That's how God gives gifts. Why? Because he loves you. I mean, God would never give you grace and mercy if he didn't love you. I don't like them, but I'm going to give them grace and mercy. It doesn't work that way. There's an intention about God's gift, and his intention... Is, is off that premise. He loves you so very much. See, I think a lot of people struggle this time of year because they truly have lost sight of how much God truly loves them. If you're, if you're feeling overwhelmed by this season, by all that's going on, uh, return back to the aspect of the intention of God's gift to you. It's a powerful, powerful thing. Uh, when we give in any other fashion, Different than how God gives to us, I think we mess things up. I think we mess up the concept of giving, which messes up the whole concept of receiving. A gift has an intention. Secondly, a gift provides a message. A gift provides a message. You could say it this way. A gift speaks something. It communicates something. It provides a a message to it. Look at John. We know John 3, 16. And some are familiar with the next verse, but many are not. They understand that God loved and he gave his son. But in John 3, 17, it says, For God did not send his son. In verse 16, it says, uh, God loved. He so loved the world. But in John 3, 17, it tells us what he didn't do, what his message wasn't in giving the gift. He said, uh, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't give us this gift to tell us how bad we are. He didn't give us this gift to tell you how horrible your life is, how uh, completely hopeless you are. He didn't give the gift for that. It says, says, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That's the premise. That's the message. This is going to save you. Imagine somebody drowning in the water. I mean, they're, they're there drowning, and you're in this perfectly great boat, and you've got this perfectly great life preserver. And you say, hey, 
I'm going to give you this, but I want you to know, I told you years ago you should have taken swim lessons. You agree? I'll wait till you come back up. All right, now, what I was saying about the swim lessons, right? Can you imagine, like, condemning them? I told you not to jump in. You're not a good swimmer. I told you not to jump in because you're just not good at it. And I just, and I have this gift, and I'm going to give it to you, but I want you to understand how bad you are. I think sometimes people treat God's gift that way. He's going to give it to me because I'm so horribly bad. No, you're in a very bad situation, and what God has to give you is because he loves you, because he wants to save you, not to condemn you and tell you how horrible drowning is, how horrible your death would be. He, he's telling you how awesome and powerful what he has to offer you is. Our giving has to come through that understanding through that idea, through that message, we understand that gifts send a message. Uh, you know, if you've ever been given a keepsake, I've been given some keep, what we just call a keepsake, uh, a family heirloom, uh, you know, something that was special. And the only reason maybe it's special is of who had it before, of who owned it. Who I, I have a, a, it's actually a sewing machine. It's an old Singer sewing machine, and it's in a, a wooden box and you actually don't even know it's a sewing machine and it's in my my office at the house kind of my man cave and so it has like antlers on it and fishing stuff and magazines and stuff and you know because I don't sew I know it surprises many of you but um, and that's part of my office and to me it's priceless because it was my great grandmother's it was my grandmother's and then it was my mom's and I remember when I took it years, years ago, I've had it for many years, and my mom said, now don't sell that. And I'm like, at first I was like, seriously, mom, like, I'm going to take this because I want to sell it. That's what I want to do. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of beat up. It's, but now it's kind of actually got a cool factor to it. Evidently, that's shabby chic. I know, you weren't expecting that, were you? Yeah. It's... Uh, otherwise, just kind of like dented up and ugly. That's another name for that, right? And... Man, but I love it. It looks great. Why? Because of who had it. It's, it's something I want to take care of. That was a gift to me. And it's not like I look at it and go, gosh, this thing's junky looking. This thing, uh, does it need refinished? Yeah, sure. And, and maybe one day I'll do that. But I don't mind it like this. It's not how it looks. It's whose it was. Who it came from. That's the gift. Uh, I think what God gives us, sometimes it's in a moment in our life that uh, we're just, I'm so undeserving of this. I, I just don't know what I'm going to do with this. I, or right now, I don't even know I'm how I'm going to take care of this. And God says, well, see, that's the thing about my gift is I'm going to help you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ensure that this gift is used. It'd be like kind of throwing somebody the life preserver and, and going, there it is. And they're like, okay, but I'm just going to try to, Try, try to do this on my own for a little bit longer, and the gift is right there. See, the gift that God gives us, it, it communicates a message, and it's not to tell us how bad we are. It's to tell us how awesome he is. Thirdly, a gift makes a difference. A gift makes a difference. Years ago, we were in our apartment. It was our first apartment. We got married, and I'd, I'd fix some, uh, what are they, waffles, you know, and, and, and Heather was getting ready to leave, and I put the waffles in the toaster and pulled them out, and we had just bought a, a bottle of syrup, and it was a glass bottle of syrup, and, and I kiss her goodbye, and she's getting ready to walk out, and I drop the syrup, and it hits flat on the bottom of the syrup bottle, and it busts, and I start seeing the, the syrup just start to move out from the bottom, and I'm like, if I grab it, it's all going to go everywhere. It's all going to, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be like, um, I don't know what to do, but time is of the essence right now. And I got to do something, you know. Can you imagine that situation? And, and if Heather goes, well, you know, let me, let me just encourage you. Okay. I mean, that's not a bad gift to me in the moment, but it doesn't make a difference in my situation. 
I needed something that would make a difference, like a mop, like a new apartment. I mean, you know, something that, I think sometimes in our life, we, we treat the gift of God like it's something that can't make a difference. Like it's something that's just a really cool suggestion. Like it's something that's just an afterthought. But in reality, his gift makes a difference in our lives. That's why it's given to us, um, Galatians 2.20. Uh, Paul says this, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. That He's describing the gift and how it works in our lives, how it's designed to work. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If you go back to the maybe the illustration of the drowning person and they're drowning, I don't think God's gift even works like this, that he throws us a life preserver. I think how God's gift operates is he dives right in and he grabs hold of us and he goes, I got you. It's okay. And then there's a lot of people that are flailing, you know, because drowning people can drown people. They get on top of you. They just want to get to the top of the water, but praise God, he's... He's not just a pretty good swimmer. He walks on water. You like what I did there? Yeah. See, his gift is something that makes a difference for your life. And you say, well, I just, you know, I just, I, I've tried Jesus. I, it just seems like I've, I'm overwhelmed. Okay, maybe you need to stop flailing. Maybe you need to stop doing it in your own power. Maybe you need to allow the gift that God has offered, the gift that God has presented to do what it can only do. And that's to make a difference. Everything we are and everything we have to give is because of his gift to us. When we take hold of his gift, when we take hold of all that God is and all that God has, it makes a difference and it changes us, amen? Paul sent a letter to the Corinthian church. In the New Testament, he, he writes to the Corinthians in First and Second Corinthians, and they'd been discussing on how they were going to receive an offering how they were going to gather together an offering for the ministry and, and move it forward. And he's talking about this understanding of giving, but then there's a precedent. If we're going to give gifts that make a difference, we have to have the right spirit about it. We have to have the right heart. We have to have the right mindset about it. And so he's instructing them, and he's laying forth a point to them of ensuring that they give in the right way. I think we miss that sometimes. We want to make a difference with maybe our gift, or we want God's gift in our life to make a difference, but we, we got the wrong heart. we got the wrong mindset. Uh, we're selfish about it. We're, we're, we're looking at it wrong. It's as though we're drowning, and we believe that we deserve to be saved, that we deserve, and, and you say, well, I mean, does, don't we deserve to be saved? Yeah, but the problem is, is God doesn't just, he, he owes us nothing. But he looks at us and he goes, I love them so much. I'll give. And that's where the difference occurs. Paul is trying to illustrate this in the aspect of the mind and the heart and the right way of giving and how to give. And he, he says, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8, he says, the point is this. He says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Uh, that's not just money. That's your life. That's by faith. He says, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Verse 7, each one must give. If I just stopped right there, I mean, I think sometimes people go, I can't afford, I can't, I, I'm so thankful that God didn't look at my life or your life and go, I just can't afford to do that right now. I just can't afford to invest in them right now. Uh, he gave us everything. He says, each must give. As he has decided in his heart, that's why the heart's got to be right, uh, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound to you. He says, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. I can't think of a better way to illustrate the gift that God has given us, uh, the way he has given it as a shadow for our lives to give and receive gifts. So again, if you're overwhelmed by this season, it may be that you don't have the right understanding of what it is to give. 
And without that right understanding, everything's going to be distorted. Everything's going to be messed up. You may find yourself trying to fight in your own power. And church, I'm telling you, it's not enough. It's not enough. I close with this. Because of his gift, we can give. Uh, Christians, this goes so far past money, though that's part of it. This goes so far past effort. This is our whole being. Paul said it. I've been crucified with Christ. No longer do I live, but Christ lives through me. And in that, the gift that God has given me that makes a difference is a gift that is given through me that makes a difference. It communicates that intention. It has a message about it, but it it has the ability, the power to make a difference for ourselves and for others, amen? We have with us uh, the understanding of communion. We have uh, the, the understanding, if you, if you uh, didn't receive communion in a moment, we're going to receive communion together. If you didn't receive this cup, uh, our ushers are going to look around here, and maybe you would uh, raise your hand, and uh, they will come and, and serve you. We got some ushers. Anybody, we got some down here. Just hold that hand up for a moment. They'll come. I've got some down here. Just hold your hand high and they'll see it. I can't think of anything else that reminds us of the greatest gift we've ever been given. It's communion. Christ paying a debt we owed. Christ diving right in to our situation and saying, I'm going to save this one. I'm going to save this one because it's their only hope, yeah, but because I love them. You know, it's one thing to see somebody in a desperate situation and you run to help. You know, people have given their life for that. Don't even know the person. Push them out of the way of a car and they take the hit. Uh, Do something for them that they don't know them and it's in the moment. Humans can do that. Think how much more God can do. Think of how much more God does because he knows us, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and he loves you. And he says, I'm, I'll, I'll jump right in there with you. If you accept this gift, I'll jump right in there with you. I'll pay it in full. That's what communion reminds us of. I think that's a powerful thing. Because of his gift, we can receive. We can receive refreshing. Maybe you're here today and you need some refreshing. You're watching online. You need, you need something refreshed in your life. Uh, that's part of this gift refreshing a a uh, being resupplied you feel like you're lacking you feel like i mean that's a huge thing right now in the world is the supply chain guess uh, guess what about god's supply chain it never ends that doesn't mean you're gonna have faith uh, not have to have faith sometimes you're gonna have to have faith uh you're gonna have to i know this is probably a curse word to many you may have to wait i don't like that god give me patience okay Patience involves that. Yeah. Well, that's not what I meant, <laughs> but that's how it works, right? The idea of being restored. God's a master at putting back together broken things. A master at putting back together what we can't. Uh, restoring, uh, resurrecting things that have died. Our lives, our hopes, our dreams. This is all part of his gift. Uh, to truly understand giving, we look to how God has given us. To truly understand giving, I, I think there's no other place to look. There's no other way to look for it. We have this communion. I think it represents that intention of God's gift to us. It represents that uh, message that God sends to us that we sometimes cast off and it, it communicates that difference that it makes in and through our lives. I want to read this scripture again, then we're going to go into this song and and then we'll receive communion together. John 3, 16 and 17 it says this For God so loved the world Uh, You could personalize it and say God, for God so loved me We say, well I don't want to be, you know presumptuous, yeah, you're included here Uh, It includes you. And that person you can't stand or hate, it includes them too. For God so loved the world that he gave. 
his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Before we go into that song, the Bible says to look in, to examine yourself. Before we receive this, it says as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we, we proclaim, we declare the truth of his gift. That's what we're about to do. And then you say, well, I'm just not perfect. I'm not worthy. None of us are. That's why we need that gift. <laughs> but it says to examine yourself. Make sure you're not just doing this to do it. It's not just something that you're just filling in your life because it's just protocol. No, God's got more than that. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it says you'll be saved. What an amazing word we just heard. Click here for video announcements and click here to subscribe and stay connected with Crosswalk Online.